Hey there, everybody, and welcome back yet again for more Silent Hill for the Room. Well, God, last time did not go as well as planned. As we made our way through Apartment World, Eileen ended up well, biting the big one, I guess. And we learned a bit more about our neighbors, especially our next door neighbor, Skinned Mike, and his love of pornography. But, if you also recall, we found, well, a bunch of indentions in our storage slash laundry room. And, well, that means we now get to use our placards, but first, hmm, is anything going on in Eileen's apartment? So they took the victim to St. Jerome's, huh? Yeah, she's not gonna make it. She had numbers in her back, too. Walter Sullivan copycat. Round three, huh? Well, they never got the scumbag behind round two a few years back. Maybe it's the same guy. Oh, what if one, two, and three? Oh, what if they're all the same guy? What the hell are you talking about? You know Sullivan killed himself. The weird thing is, there were no clues. Crime scenes were always spotless. No fingerprints, no fibers, nothing. Just the numbers, two, zero, one, two, one. I've been a cop for a long time, but i never seen a case like this one. It's almost like, like they were killed by a ghost or something. I especially love that final, somewhat grizzled and possibly drunk officer. Also, for some reason, Robbie the Rabbit was a bit shifted around. Nice little subtle horror there. Not even sure what that is, but it seems like something that we actually saw in the beginning intro part. But, I guess, well, let's actually check to see if we can't go to another new world. Now it appears that our normal passageway into the other worlds has been blocked off. And that's mostly due to the fact that we've been given a brand new passageway in the storage room. And that one actually seems to be the one that, well, I guess Joseph Schreiber was dealing with in his journeys through the other world. We get a very clearly defined hole this time, not one that's growing, and it's a much darker black hole than we've seen before. And already Henry is starting to wonder where it's going to lead this time, but also his thoughts seem to go back to Eileen. As to what their relationship was, well, as far as we can tell, there wasn't one. to be the gentleman that we had run into in Apartment World as to what he was doing here in what is actually called Hospital World, continuing with the 
great names. Uh, well, we're not actually sure of that right now. Needless to say, I think after we deal with all these Hummers, and as you can tell, there are quite a few Hummers in just this particular room. Well, we do have a number of doors to go with, but I almost feel inclined to go back in there and ask him a few questions. But it appears that he has left the room and instead left behind, well, our brand new enemy for the section. What the hell was that noise? Yeah, this towering, towering giantess is called a patient. They're actually fairly dangerous as they come equipped with weapons. They are a little bit aggressive, but their main... Uh, I guess ability is to burp in your face? I'm not really certain on that particular sound choice. But they do take quite a bit of damage, they give out quite a bit of damage, and as we'll be seeing, they are very dangerous whenever you have to deal with more than one of them. But I do especially like the creaking of this uh, bed here. Nice little subtle continual and disturbing noise. But, yeah, the man in the coat has seemingly disappeared. And though we have quite a selection of doors, I... Can we get out of here? Of course not. That would be way too easy. Now instead, I think it's time to start exploring the hospital. Now, in this first office here, it may not seem like there's much to it, but we actually find a brand new weapon. Which is, well, it's pretty much box cutter. And it says that it's hard to use as a weapon, but that's mostly due to its short range. It's actually, it can be a fairly good weapon against some enemies. As you can tell, it has a very quick charge up, but it does not do a lot of damage. It mostly makes up for that by being very quick, and that's about it. So we get a cutscene, rather a confusing cutscene to me at least, because well, as far as we have been able to tell, there's not really any kind of connection outside of being next door neighbors between Eileen and Henry. So maybe he's just suddenly very empathetic. I mean, he's he's shown some care for the other victims, but yeah, for some reason Eileen is well, his main focus now. Maybe it's just the possibility that she is still alive. But from that memo, we've been able to find out that a nurse seemingly has lost the key to Eileen's room. And that's usually a bad sign whenever someone's room gets cut off from, well, I guess, the rest of reality. It's a, it's a pretty keen observation, followed by a not keen observation. Hmm. I, is Eileen in this room, Henry? Is she in this corner? No. She's definitely not in that corner. I, I guess Eileen just isn't in this room that you could see all of when you walked in. 
But at least we do get a nutrition drink. One thing I will say about Hospital World is that for some reason it suddenly starts giving out a lot more healing items. And, oh, what's that? appears to be a purse, and apparently it's a very important purse that it got its own cutscene. But by picking up Eileen's handbag, we see that it's, well, for some reason called an Eileen-only weapon. Does that mean we'll be playing as Eileen? Well, we'll find out later on in this video. For right now, well, we'll just be holding on to that for very obvious reasons. And in this little lounge area. We, well, it looks like Henry is concerned with this baby's medical chart. As to why that is, it's not really ever explained. Maybe it's a, an allusion to the baby that Frank found in apartment 302? Who knows? And an inaccessible elevator means we're going to have to find some other means to get up to the second floor. But first, burping combat. Yeah, we not only see the rather uh, mixed nature of fighting with the paper cutting knife, but we also see... Um, we also get audibly raped by the incessant, awful burping noise that the patients make. We also see the fact that they actually can do a considerable amount of damage very quickly. Pretty much you want to get them down on the ground as quickly as possible and give them a good smash to the womb area, I assume. They are quite tricky customers and, you know, honestly we're just going to stick with the axe from now on. But what's our reward? Why, it's our first ampule of the game. And in fact, there are only two ampules in this entire game, so very important items for later on. And in fact, they actually have a new additional factor to them, which is that they'll actually heal Henry even more after the initial healing effect. But before I continue on, I do want to make some space in my inventory, so back to the apartment. Well. Let's just pretend we went back to the apartment very quickly. And... What the... Yeah, waiting on the second floor is another... I don't even want to call these enemies because they can't be killed. They are actually possessed wheelchairs that will not only knock you down, but will also give off the ghost uh, aura effect of hurting you. So be very, very cautious around those. Also, we're given a very long hallway with quite a few doors. And these particular doors each have what I would like to call very uh, 
interesting set pieces behind each one. Now the order of the door is each time you uh, go into this hallway is a bit randomized, but it will usually have the same set of set pieces just behind well, different doors. And we also get a brand new and very valuable item. It's our second anti, well, I guess third anti-spirit weapon for the game, if you consider the sword as well. The holy candle is pretty much an aura effect that will counteract the ghost effect. It's very nice in certain situations. Also get another saint medallion, which, if you can draw some illusion or assumption, is why this room isn't really all that freaky. Unless, of course, you consider the light outside the window to be from heaven. Which, uh, I guess you would if you were ten. But the set pieces in each one of these rooms ranges from meh to actually very aesthetically interesting. This one I mostly find somewhere in the middle. I mean, it's nice to get a new golf club, obviously. And the, uh, the dead bodies on the far side of the wire gating here is interesting, but... Henry's response is yet again kind of stupid. No, what do we have here but a key in a snake's mouth? No. Might as well go ahead and take it. Oh no, it's a trap. It, uh... Definitely a tricky trap to get out of. How are we gonna get out? Oh, with the key we just got. Thankfully though, this key actually does have more of a use than just getting us out of the trap we were already in. And here are some more x-rays for Henry to assume are Eileen's. Actually not certain the measure of Eileen's injuries, but they look pretty bad from what we saw. Nice uh, boil on the bed, full of needles. Oh, and even more wheelchairs are spawning as we continue down the hallway. And you may be noticing that the patients actually require two stomps to take down. That's... Well, you have to be careful that you don't miss out on that because they will pop back up to life. And what appears to be somewhat of a distorted figure behind a tarp. But 
But yeah, we need to remember that one door we just unlocked, but we do need to keep exploring because there's still more goodies to slowly get across webbed floors. Yeah, you can now kind of see why I wanted to make sure and have as much inventory space as possible because this hallway is actually full of very nice items. I don't really have much to say to this. This is, uh, Henry, do you, do you have anything to say? No, Henry's got nothing to. And hopefully you will excuse the fact that I there are some additional flavor text if Henry interacts with some of this stuff. The problem was that, well, the game seemed to crash quite a bit sometimes when I was just investigating things, so I mostly wanted to be a little bit careful. there are no horrible instant death traps in this game. And it took me a while to figure out what the shadow was, but I think it's actually supposed to be something invisible sitting in the wheelchair. And we have our first box of revolver bullets. We'll only be getting about five or six of these total in the game. So we need to make sure and get as many as we possibly can. In the final room, we have one more nutrition drink. And we actually have pretty much a full inventory for the first time in the game. With that, well, we've reached the end of this wonderful, confusing hallway. And now all we have to do is figure out where that one locked door was. Thankfully the map is very handy in pointing out I, I did miss a room, I'm sorry about that. But it also shows where the locked door was. Oh my god, it's possibly a real doll. Or it might be Eileen, let's find out. that but it's true and there was a kid with you
That boy protected me from the man with the coat. here, then you die in the real world too. <laughs> anyway, the only way out of here is through that hole. Okay, okay, take me with you. You know, for a second there, it looked like Henry had turned into David Copperfield. Am I, am I right, guys? Ah, uh, never mind. Uh, but yeah. We now have Eileen, who's going to be following us around. We we need to protect her. Thankfully, we can give her a means to protect herself. But that's usually a bad idea because that means she'll become aggressive and try to go at enemies, and that's really a bad idea. Yeah, it looks like the wheelchairs are gone, and instead, well, replaced with two. Fairly there cumbersome patients. And as far as I can tell, most of the enemies will pretty much focus on Eileen over us, which is mostly a bad thing. Eileen will make some attempts to run away, but as we'll see as we make our way down the hallway, she is not really in tip-top shape. In fact, we pretty much can't run any time we're around her because we'll just well, outpace her. But we can now call the elevator up and hopefully be able to take it to other floors of the hospital. But not before being attacked by a patient in a very confined space. Just calm down, Eileen. Jesus, woman. Just dancing around trying to confuse me. Yeah, that can be a rather awkward trap to be caught in. And I do emphasize trap because there is no reason at all to go in this elevator. The buttons are broken. But there was a good reason to call the elevator that actually, well, opens up the first floor elevator door so we can explore that. But I really don't feel comfortable having, well, Eileen follow us around and our continuing adventures into the hospital world. And thankfully there was an available portal back to the apartment, so hopefully we can take her back there and she'll be a-okay.
So we get no first person Eileen action. And also there seemed to be a crash somewhere in the apartment. Hmm. This definitely is not a good sign. Gee, the ceiling fan has fallen down. And this is definitely an indicator of, well, a massive change in the game. What that change is, well, the first part we can kind of see immediately, or at least I can tell you about. And that is the fact that we will no longer be healed by going back to the apartment. We now are completely dependent on any healing items we find in the game. So hopefully you haven't been using them, because otherwise you will be heavily, heavily fucked at this point. For right now though, I feel pretty confident in my combat skills. I'm kind of worried though that, well, Eileen didn't come back with us, so that means she's just sitting in the hospital alone, but... There was another good reason for coming back to the apartment, and that was to find a red envelope under the door. Yeah, it appears that we have gotten another letter from Mr. Schreiber. This time, well, he doesn't seem to be speaking from a past perspective. He actually seems to be speaking from an almost, uh, well, he seems to be rather knowledgeable about what's going on in the now, which is a bit disconcerting. He also talks about going down to the deepest part of him and looking for the ultimate truth. Hmm. How symbolic, I guess? Sure. But at least us, it does give us a key, which we will be pretty much putting into immediate use in the hospital. But before we head back, well, we do have even more reading material to get through. And some of this is just rather interesting information about Mr. Schreiber's continuing investigation into Walter Sullivan. And I sadly apparently clicked on these out of order. This one is actually going over uh, Mr. Schreiber's actual being in Silent Hill and finding Walter Sullivan's resting place that was apparently right next to Toluca Lake and what we can gather is that we've also visited his coffin if you remember back in Forest World we did happen upon a small graveyard with a young boy in it and we also found a coffin with the numbers 11121 in it And what that actually seems to allude to is the fact that Walter, I guess, was supposed to be the 11th victim. As to how he would continue to murder the other 21 victims if he was the 11th is, well, a bit hard to figure out. Maybe there are multiple killers, maybe that gentleman that we're seeing with the long hair and coat is actually some accomplice of Walter, or is another member of the Order. And in this final diary entry we find, well, yet again, how could Walter Sullivan had committed these crimes? He obviously stabbed himself in the neck with a spoon, of all things. And it also goes into, well, a little bit more information that 
there is actually a pretty massive difference between the first 10 killings and, well, I guess killings 12 through 17? Yeah, I think that's right. The primary difference was, well, for some reason victims 1 through 10 all had their hearts ripped out, and victims 12 through 17 actually still, well, they still had a heart. As to what this difference is supposed to allude to, we'll be finding out later, I'm sure. But it does seem to say that someone actually had a little bit more information than the public had access to, so maybe that does really allude to Walter Sullivan well, having an accomplice. And then it just goes to say that Joseph Schreiber will be heading to Silent Hill. And with even more backstory under our belt, I figured I would actually save here very quickly because, well, like I said before, this is a turning point in the game. And I do want to make sure I don't miss out on any endings. But let's go ahead and head back and make sure that Eileen is doing okay. Have you been here the whole time? Yeah, and I didn't see any hole either. You just disappeared all of a sudden. I can't stay here by myself. I'll be cursed. I know it. What am I gonna do? I might know a way to save you. Do you know about someone named Joseph? doing an investigation about a religious cult and a man named Walter Sullivan. I got this letter from him. He told me to go down, down into the deepest part of him, and to look for the ultimate truth. Let's do that. There must be something down there. But for some reason, after that whole, we'll find the ultimate truth and we'll go down to the deepest part and just Henry going, let's do that. Just so matter, matter of factly, just so weird. This is a nightmare. It can't be happening. But sadly, it is happening, yep. Yeah. The rest of the game, if you can believe it, is an escort mission. And if you think that means the game is going to go easy on us, well, you would be horribly, horribly mistaken because, well, well, we'll see soon enough at the end of this update. For right now, though, we do have a rather tricky situation to deal with here, and that's mostly due to some very important facts that the game the game does not explain to you. The first thing is, well, Eileen, well, she can't really ever die. She doesn't have health or anything like that, but she will take damage. And, well, let's just say her well-being is actually a very large part.
part to the end of the game. The other thing it doesn't tell you is the fact that, well, her health will also be affected if you leave her alone in rooms by herself. So, that's just a number of handicaps we'll run into as we continue on, but I think for right now, I, I'm pretty sure everyone wants to hear these god-awful sounds, so I'll be quiet. Yeah, for all those who've said in the thread how great the sound work is in this game, I fully wholeheartedly agree with you. This is possibly the scariest sound effect oriented Silent Hill game ever created. But via that sign we've been able to figure out that our direction well, apparently is ever downward. Downward, downward, downward. Spiraling into a descent of madness, apparently. good question, Eileen. And about the best answer I can give is, well, let's say, passageway to the ultimate truth. Apparently that ultimate truth is, well, incredibly abstract and dilapidated concept. I'm scared. Sorry, Eileen, I'm trying not to go too fast, but you're a bit of a slowpoke. And we could have gone back to the apartment, but I'll hold off on that because we have a door waiting for us. Where does this door lead? Well, it leads to more Dutch angles, but it actually leads to a somewhat familiar place. It may not seem familiar right away, but I think in, by the end of the video we'll, we'll, we'll know where we are. though a very important holy candle. There are only 13 of those in the entire game and it is a good idea to pick up all of them. I wonder if Joseph is still alive. Well, that is a very good question, Irene, but it's... Well, we've got a, a few more important things to deal with, such as... Very aggressive gumheads. And, does this place seem familiar to you viewers yet? Well, I, it might have been a while since we've seen this. But where we are is actually back at the beginning of Subway World. This time, though, it does have some, well, obviously, new enemies, and it's actually going to have some new puzzles. But this is actually kind of going to become the gimmick from now on, and that's going to be well, returning to places we've already been. But I think for right now, after I murder this gumhead, this will actually be a fairly good place to stop, and, well, hopefully you'll join me next time. 
for even more escort missions, even more backtracking in Silent Hill for the Ruins.